Creating new machine learning systems requires data. These data need to come from somewhere. And natural language processing systems are no exception. If you were to ask a statistician, they would tell you, you should get your data from an IID distribution, independent and identically distributed. Independent means that example xn doesn't depend on any of the previous examples 1 to n minus 1. Indeed, all of the examples come from the same underlying distribution. But that's the problem. Language isn't like neutrino spewing from the sun or a geyser erupting. Language is an interactive process. And I'm going to argue that this has always been a problem for natural language processing data sets and that it's only getting worse with the advent of Muppet models. And we're going to need to address the problem head on as we go forward. And if you don't know what I mean by Muppet models, that's what I call LLMs. Link in the description. One of the largest sources of NLP data are crowd workers, like it or not. These are not representative of the global population. They have chosen to work on things like Mechanical Turk or Upwork. By definition, they have access to a computer. They're typically younger and they're focused in particular geographic areas. And even if you restrict to US crowd workers, because nobody has virtual private networks or virtual credit cards, this distribution does not match the overall US population. And nor does the language necessarily of these crowd workers match the kind of language that the IID population, whatever that means, over individuals would use. And beyond the underlying distribution issue, there's a quality issue. Crowdsourced data often have shortcuts that allow the system to cheat. We've seen this for a number of examples. Entailment. Systems can detect whether a claim is true or not by just looking at the premise of the hypothesis, when you should really need both. Remember in NLI, you look at the premise condition on it and predict whether the hypothesis is true or not given that premise. Check the description for a full description of what entailment or natural language inference means. Guru Angan et al. showed that crowd workers use the same tricks to create examples. At least if you see that in a hypothesis means it's entailed, irrelevant information means that it's neutral, and negation often means that there's a contradiction. Poliak et al. showed that you can get high accuracy by ignoring the premise and characterize the tells that often appear in the data. We had our own paper that showed that even when the premise is required, it doesn't necessarily require deep reasoning. This is also true for fact-checking data sets from crowd workers. Like with entailment, some logical operators like negation are more likely associated with refutation. We talked about this in our adversarial fact-checking paper, Fool Me Twice, which tried to correct some of these issues. And for question answering, for data sets like Squad, the answer selection process often doesn't need deep understanding of the source context as described by Weisbohn et al. Uh, look at the passage and find the first thing that could possibly fit the answer type. When finds the year, who finds a person, where finds a place, and so on. This is because the crowd workers looked at a passage and had to generate a question that could trigger the appropriate word. And often it didn't require too much reasoning because they just wanted to get done as quickly as possible. Speaking of question answering, natural questions, hence the name, claims to be natural. These are data from real users. This actually is IID, right? And I think the answer is still no. And all of this is because language is still a negotiation, a give and take between two agents. And Google is a part of that negotiation. Now, Google is a fantastic tool, but it has its quirks. It has its strengths, its weaknesses, it's really, really good at looking up who played role X in movie Y. IMDB and other structured knowledge bases make answering this kind of question easy. So people know that if 
they ask this kind of question from Google, like what's the capital of Australia, they're going to get a good answer. In general, if I can specify entity X and relationship F of X that's going to appear in some knowledge base, I'm going to get a great answer. So this means that people are more likely to ask this kind of question. But longer questions are just harder to answer. People want to get answers to their questions. Over the last 25 years, Google has trained its users to decompose their complex information needs into atomic queries that Google could get right. And the kinds of questions that Google isn't so good at are not going to be asked as often. They're not going to be a part of natural questions. And that means that it won't be part of the all-important natural questions leaderboard, which means that we will ignore the questions that Google isn't already good at. Now Jordan, aren't you just being a meanie by picking on natural questions? Your favorite QA data set that you keep going on and on about, QuizBowl, isn't that IID either. And that's right. I like these crazy QuizBowl questions, partially because the distribution is carefully selected by hand to reflect the undergraduate curriculum at American universities. This also is an IID, but I think that specifying the distribution and being able to argue about what is inside it and what is outside of it is a good thing. In addition to the kinds of questions in natural questions, Google has trained users to ask questions in a particular way. Instead of asking, who is Amal? Almadine's husband, people type Alma Almadine's husband because Google started as a search engine that ignored function words. So this also affects what gets into natural questions. Google has trained people to write these queries. Natural questions selects from that subset and that becomes a leaderboard. From a socio-technical perspective, Google is to the turn of the century like Muppet models are to today. People are learning how to skillfully prompt Muppet models. Muppet models are impersonating humans on crowdworking platforms. Another reason the data sets from crowdworkers aren't IID. People are using them to write their essays, which will in turn be used to train the next generation of Muppet models when those essays get posted on the web. So what does this all mean? I'm going to get on my soapbox a little bit. I think this means we must embrace the interaction between users and systems. And that means something like adversarial examples. In later lectures, link in the description if you're impatient. But the basic idea is that you have humans and models interact with each other to create examples that push the frontier of what's actually possible. Sam Bowman wrote a recent paper about the dangers of underclaiming. And one of the parts of this paper was that if you do research on adversarial data, the accuracy numbers that you're going to get are lower than normal data sets. And I think this makes a category error. There's no such thing as a normal IID data set. All data sets have their own pathologies and you cannot readily compare squad numbers to NQ numbers. They are fundamentally different underlying distributions and data collection practices. The same thing is true for my beloved quiz bowl format. And I think this is a healthy development. Rather than obsessing about rank on a leaderboard and the single floating point number with your accuracy that comes out of that leaderboard, we should focus on what the abilities are of our systems and what are the weaknesses of those systems. And accepting that there is no such thing as the IID language bunny bringing you a basket of nicely distributed questions will help us get there faster. This is just one video from a course that I'm teaching. If you want to get the whole context, check out the course webpage linked below. There you can find all of the videos in the right order. YouTube likes to show you older videos out of order, homeworks, exercises, and recommended readings. And if you want to help other people find videos like this, please be sure to like and subscribe. 
to provide a big gradient to the algorithm.